So the thing when we're doing ref deep tendon reflexes, you're testing a specific reflex that usually matches with a specific nerve root. So when we talk about C5, we'll be talking about the biceps. C6, brachioradialis. C7, triceps. Not every level is going to have a reflex. In the lower extremity, you pretty much only have two that are commonly done. There are other reflexes for other levels in the, low, in the lower extremity, but you're pretty much only doing one, two. The patellar reflex and the Achilles reflex. So then now we're talking about myotones. Okay, so again, you have three different things that you're doing to assess the different nerve roots. Deep tendon reflexes, and keep in mind that not every nerve root level is going to have a reflex. And then we're going to talk about myotones. There's a little bit different between manual muscle testing, where you're testing a specific muscle, versus a myotone, where you're trying to assess a certain nerve root. So basically, they're going to try to move a certain body in a certain direction, and you're going to press, you're applying resistance. And you typically going to hold that for five seconds when you're doing a loud tone. So you're looking for, if, if they're strong without pain, that's what you're looking for normally. They're having strength in the muscle, and they shouldn't have any pain when they're doing it. So if, you, if, if their strength is there and they have pain, then that's going to usually indicate an injury to the muscle itself. They maybe have a muscle tear or something like that. And then if it's weak and painful, there could be something wrong with the muscle, but also maybe some other condition that keeps them from contracting, like if there's pain. So if you have a fracture or something like that. But if they don't have any pain associated with it, but they can't move the muscle, then that's typically going to be a nerve problem, nerve conduction problem. Or there could be a complete rupture of the muscle. Okay? If you have like Achilles tendon rupture when the muscle's completely, or the tendon's completely severed, it's not going to hurt because there's nothing to <coughs> there. But they're not going to be able to contract. And then when you talk about myotomes, then you're going to have a grading scale to go with that as well. So zero is where, even if you're eliminating gravity, they can't even contract the muscle. There's no visible sign of a muscle contraction at all, and that would be zero. I mean, even if you palpate the muscle and you can't feel them contracting the muscle at all, then that's zero. But if you do feel some type of muscle contraction where you can feel the muscle move, but it's not strong enough to move the joint, then that's going to be a, a one. In this case, you're looking for a normal to be grade five. In the reflex, you're looking at for grade two. So now if they can move without gravity, so like if I'm trying to move my arm up like this, I'm going against gravity. If I'm laying on my back, and <coughs> If I'm laying on the floor and I'm doing this, I'm not working against gravity, I'm just moving the muscle. Okay? So if you eliminate gravity and they can do the range of motion, then that's going to be a grade two. And then grade one, you're actually not, not, even, not moving the muscle, but you get a sense of a, of a small contraction. But in here, you can get some movement, so it's going to initiate. So now, with fair is about all they can do is lift their arm up against gravity. So they have enough strength to lift it with, with gravity in place. And then four is where you can apply some resistance but not full resistance. So then five is going to be normal where you can contract the muscle against strong resistance. Okay? And then again, it depends on the size of the patient you're testing and what muscle you're testing. I mean, obviously, you know, you're your finger muscles are not going to be as strong as your quads or your hamstrings or pecs or something like that. So, if, you know, if you're a small practitioner and you're testing some big, huge linebacker or something, you know, if you test their hamstrings, they might kick you across the room. <coughs> All right, so.
so now we'll start going through the different myotomes. And a lot of these pictures of the different nerves and stuff are out of this uh, Hoppenfeld. And it's kind of an old book. They used it when I was in school, so that's pretty old there. Right? Um, so now we'll start going through the different myotomes. So we're talking about C5 myotome. And that's basically going to be the deltoid muscle. So basically, typically you're going to have the patient hold their arm up like this, and then you're going to apply resistance like that. And then you're going to hold it for how long? Five seconds. Okay. So we'll go through some of these, and then we can practice them. So in this case, what they're doing here is that they're doing it with the arm a little bit farther down like this, and then you're having one, one arm stabilizing here, and then the other arm in here. So this is the one where you're applying the resistance. So you're pushing down on the forearm like the, I mean on the upper arm at the elbow. And then you can stabilize here with the other arm. When, when you're doing monotones like this or, or muscle testing, typically what you're going to do is, you, you, you want to do this efficiently. So you're not going to explain some a long elaborate thing of what you want the patient to do. You want to give them a quick, short instruction of what you're trying to do. And it's usually going to be involved, like you do some type of stimulation. Okay? So you're going to do something like this. You can say, I'm going to press here, press against my hand, don't let me move you. Instead of saying, all right, I want you to abduct your arm, your, shoulder, your upper arm at the shoulder. Okay, so you, if you're going to say, I want you to press here and press against my hand, don't let me move you. So it's something like that. Usually you're giving some type of stimulation where you're tapping and you say, I'm going to try to move this way, you try to do the other way or don't let me move. <coughs> so then another thing, there's going to be more than one way to do different monotone levels. So here, C5, you can either do the deltoid or you can do the bicep. So in this case, we're going to stabilize here. Then you're going to hold this area here. Basically, you're going to grab and you're going to tell the patient, I'm going to press here, don't let me move your arm. And you resist, you hold it for five seconds. Okay. So usually here we've got one arm to stabilize, and this one here. Does that mean that you need to do both of those? No, you can just do one. And then for the for C5 reflex, is going to be the biceps. So basically you're going to put your thumb on the <coughs> biceps tendon right here at the elbow and then tap on it. Okay, and then I don't know if I mentioned this before, is that you'll see people do reflexes. It's one thing if you're, sometimes people tend to like just push the whole hammer into it like that. It's more of a flick like this. So it's not this kind of thing, it's more just, just a quick reverse. So basically you're going to see the muscle contract, or you're going to see the tendon move. You might see movement of the arm, but at least you should see the muscle contract. And then here's kind of a way of a mnemonic to remember that C5 is the biceps, five fingers, C5. Sometimes, you know, to, to learn all these, you, it helps to have some type of way or, or a mnemonic to, to remember. But after you've gone over it enough times, you, you pretty much will, will know it. Because when you go on to the next class, which is ONE2, we're going to pretty much um, assume that you know these things. Okay? So, in this case, since I'm teaching ONE1, I know what you learned in ONE1. Yeah. <laughs> Say, did you learn that in ONE? Well, I know what you did. If you're in this class and you take ONE 2 in the next semester, you're going to have to know these. Okay? So now we're talking about a C5 dermatome. So again, a dermatome is an area on the skin where sensation is applied, is received, and it relates to that particular nerve root. Okay? So C5 is typically going to be up in this area here. Call it the prox 